I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 353. We're into the second week of November of 2023, I mean. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. That's right. I saw you had to remind someone on Twitter this week, X, whatever, Yes, that uh, we're the first and only wrestling podcast. Correct. You know what I learned on, on Twitter, uh, formerly, or, or I'm sorry. Zombie as, Twitter? Yes, zombie Twitter, or, or as is referred to in every publication and will be for the rest of the time that the current owner owns it X formerly known as Twitter. Cause nobody knows what X like, do you understand the brand recognition that that had? Like, even if you didn't use it, you knew what it was. Like it had just permeated our culture in a, in an incredibly hard to replicate way. Yes. For 15 and, years. And now everyone for the rest of time will have to write every writer, whoever has to mention Twitter in an argue in an, in an article to be accurate, will write X but then they will have to write in parentheses, formerly known as Twitter, for anyone who is an insane <laughs> to know what they're talking about. <laughs> Correct. But anyway, my, I had some thoughts which were, um, one, we would have a bigger following if I was more overtly negative about AEW more often. Uh, huh. What do you uh, know about that? Turns out that's, a, that's good business on Twitter. But it does also attract uh, the other side of the coin. Uh, of people and i upset i upset some people maybe we'll talk about that when we talk about dynamite a little bit later but uh, all right. it was an interesting week on the on the twitters all right formerly known as uh <laughs> Cr- crown jewel was this past weekend i thought as uh saudi shows go this may be the uh second one ever i've watched the whole thing mm-hmm. um i didn't watch it live but that was a pretty fun show what did you think of it yeah, I thought it was it was solid. I didn't uh there was nothing on there that I will remember uh past uh when we stopped talking about it, but I, it, it didn't offend me. It was it was it, there was slightly there's more effort put on these shows now than it than they were when they first went there and it was a bunch of 55-year-old men getting a payday and working at like a house show in Poughkeepsie. So, like, there's there's more effort put into the actual wrestling, but uh, yeah, nothing nothing crazy, nothing to write home about. But uh, it also had some news. They shot an angle. We got a return, and uh, and some other stuff also happened. So, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the flat, boring, glorified house show that we've seen on Saudi shows past, certainly. So Roman Reigns uh, retained the Universal Title in the main event. Uh, no surprise there. Uh, Cody Rhodes beat Damian Priest, uh, no surprise there. Uh, Io Sky beat Bianca Belair after help from Kyrie Sane. Mm-hmm. I guess it had leaked out um, that week that she was returning. We'd known that she was returning for many months, and they brought her back uh, seemingly as a heel. Uh, it's going to uh, uh, cuck Bailey out of damage control. Sure. Um, certainly one thing you could do yeah look um you know Kyrie was entertaining as a heel the last time she was uh she was in wwe um she and oscar were, were very entertaining as a as a heel duo but um uh i personally if i were you know if i like if i like to imagine a scenario where i uh was running a wrestling company and i uh was lucky enough to employ Kyrie sane um wouldn't wouldn't be a heel ever in in my company but here we are the a new regime is in charge and she's still a heel so uh you know what do i know i guess it's good that uh uh she's she can get medically cleared (laughs) i I think there was some question about that last time she worked for the company um unless maybe she was just beat up and uh and uh, she kept getting concussed on account of they kept making her wrestle Nia Jax. Well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> well, they put her on the other brand this time. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know, 
they take the brand splits very seriously. Very seriously, all the time. I mean, I, you would assume that, I mean, they've been teasing. The thing that would make sense is that EO and she go baby face, and then Dakota comes back and, you know, you have a baby face team against a heel team there ready to go. But we'll see. Sure. Logan Paul uh, won his first championship in WWE against Rey Mysterio. And I'd like to talk about the gif that was going around of Rey, Rey Mysterio going for the um, whatever it was. <laughs> is that the Arabian press or is that that's the floor, right? I don't know, man. He he was doing a moonsault off the ropes mm-hmm. and uh, it was supposed to like bounce back into a backbreaker or whatever. It's, mm-hmm. And everybody was praising Logan Paul for saving Rey Mysterio's life. Because uh, Ray was going to spike himself on his head uh, because of uh, how the thing went. And to which I would say, how do you know Logan Paul wasn't out of position? (laughs) Given that the move was supposed to be Ray jumping off the rope and landing on Logan Paul and Ray is upside down. I would say that an exceptional amount of the onus (laughs) is on Logan Paul to make sure he is directly under Ray when he is landing. So the fact that he had to sprint into position, barely caught him and still almost dropped him right on his skull. I would probably put that at the feet of (laughs) this is a guy who has only had 10 wrestling matches or whatever. If that, that, that was my take. Um, I, I don't know. I, a lot of the usual suspects were, uh, praising Logan Paul for this. And it's like, well, that's what he was supposed to do. And how do you know it's not his fault that he was or that he wasn't in the in, in an incorrect position when Ray launched himself backwards right. off, off the ropes? And, and to be clear, again, he's inexperienced. It's yes. not he's not taking an arm drag or a right. a back body drop like it's a it's a somewhat it takes a certain precise timing. Right. I don't blame him. No, for being out of position. But yes, the heaps of praise i saw for him having the wherewithal the quick thinking to be in the (laughs) position he was supposed to be in after he was late getting there made me feel like i was taking crazy pills so i'm glad we're on the same page there that's refreshing oh man even if we're the only two people drinking (laughs) kool-aid i'm glad that there's someone else out there that's drinking kool-aid correct yes (laughs) oh man that feels good uh (laughs) Oh, um, and it, this doesn't discount that Logan Paul is a prodigy and a tremendous athlete and uh, really, really, really damn good at this for having only done it 10 times or whatever the case is. Right. Absolutely. I mean... Absolutely. Like, like, it's hardly an insult. Like I said, like, it's a, it's a complicated <laughs> spot and he is not a full time professional wrestler. <laughs> right. So the fact that he was able to get in position at the last second and not kill Ray Mysterio. I'm glad. I'm happy that he was able to pull that off. I just don't think we need to throw him a parade for it. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, Thank you for funny. not killing Ray Mysterio, <laughs> YouTube man. In the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh man. Somebody's somebody one day, one of these legends. It's that desert. <laughs> They're good. Everyone else the is going to get on the plane. <laughs> you know what I mean? The heat's going to get to them. <laughs> Everyone else will get on the plane. <laughs> uh, Solo Sokoa uh, killed John Cena, metaphorically, mm-hmm. in uh, what was John's swan song for now. Mm-hmm. I think uh, we thought collectively that... Um, you know, it would be good if John won a match every once in a while so that when he comes back, <laughs> it means something when he has to put over someone he doesn't respect like Austin Theory. Correct. But uh, <laughs> they went with a, a different tact and uh, they had Solo Sokoa spike him in, in the throat with his thumb roughly a thousand times. And uh, they did some... Um, the finish got... The finish, the finish got kind of repetitive. John would go for a finisher, Solo would slip out, Solo would go for a finisher, John would slip out. It's like at this point, maybe that's all John has in his bag. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's fine. You know, John is uh, John's north of 45 and uh, gave his body to this business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I got no problems with John. Anytime John wants to come back, it's good for everyone. Uh, but uh, I would have had a win. And uh, I, I, I I don't know that Solo is going to be uh, significantly helped by this. I mean, de- unless, unless this helps him grow like six inches. <laughs> oh, boy. Like, I know Paul doesn't have the exact same hangups that Vince does. Wow. But I don't see him <laughs> pushing. I mean, I mean, Cena, Cena, I'm sure this is Cena writing his own stuff, but called him a Taz ripoff. And I mean, Paul, I, I don't I don't I don't want to, you know, speak for the man. But <laughs> we saw we saw in the year 2000 what Triple H thought of working a program with Taz or doing anything with Taz. Yeah. So that made me feel like, oh, this guy has a very specific ceiling. Uh, And that's fine. You know, not everybody is going to main event WrestleMania. And Solo Sokoa, I would say, is one of those people who will not main event WrestleMania. I think he's also a guy that um, you can beat. (laughs) Yeah, I don't. I don't. They've certainly beaten him enough times already. Right. It's like you know, Kevin Owens has beaten him. Like I don't. Right. I don't think it's. It's. He's not losing a lot by, you know. Again, he beats John Cena for ten minutes. Cena sells and sells and sells, and then he picks him up, hits an AA, and pins him. Like you know, do the old Hulk Hogan house show match and call it a day. Drop the leg and go home. Like it's fine. Sure. Like you're not. You're not getting hurt by that. Right. Plus, these Saudi shows are barely canon, as we've established. So, <laughs> right, yeah, there was uh, there was an angle with a Saudi actor on this show, and The Miz. Sure, sure. I felt like I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I... Speaking of praising people that do not deserve it, <laughs> sure, I'm getting to Raw now. I'm probably oh, okay. Again. No, but sorry. The Miz did a crossbody on Raw, and you would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> That he pulled off like a shooting star Phoenix Splash. He did a springboard crossbody. Yes. He did it without hurting himself or his opponent. Congratulations. Yeah, he pulled that off from his uh, his baby face moveset. <laughs> yes, and he hit the slowest tilt to world DDT I've ever seen <laughs> in my goddamn life. And I had to see people saying, he's underrated. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, back, to, back to ground Joel. Sure, that's. I don't great. dislike. I don't even dislike the Miz, but I see significantly more people complaining about how people say the Miz is bad than I even see people saying the Miz is bad at this point. I see more right. people giving him praise that I think is a little bit overdoing it than I see people actually deriding the Miz at this point in his career. Oh yeah, without question. We had a, a long running argument for, I don't know, three or four years, <laughs> whether a Zack Ryder or the Miz was a better mm-hmm. pro wrestler. And I was like, uh, a thousand percent, the Miz is a better pro wrestler. And mm-hmm. you're like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know where we stand now. <laughs> I don't know. Feels like maybe we were both wrong somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not uh, I'm not willing to go to the man on that one again. <laughs> no, I- <laughs> At this point, yeah, it's, it would be almost impossible to tell. <laughs> yeah. Last time I saw... No. Last time I saw Zack Ryder on national television, I thought he looked good. Mm-hmm. I thought he was a competent pro wrestler. Yeah. He was. He did get, as he said, the thumbs up guy role for a while where he would wrestle like Rusev and whoever when they were coming up from NXT. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, back to Crown Jewel here. Uh, there was a five way for the Women's World Championship that, uh, boy, you know, they had to lay out a lot of uh, a lot of spots mm-hmm. for this. And I thought everyone I mean, and you can imagine this match uh, ahead ahead of time and the Tower of Dooms and the uh one person has two people in a submission at the same time i think shana may have had three people in a submission at once i'm not sure um you could picture all the spots ahead of time Mm -hmm. but i thought um that and i assume this was uh molly holly and uh i don't 
know if TJ Wilson is in the day to day right now or not. Mm. But I assume Molly Holly and uh, maybe TJ Wilson laid this out. And I give them a lot of credit for laying it out. But uh, this was pure chaos. Yeah, There's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to say the least. The fact that it was passable is probably, it's a testament to everyone involved. Sure. It wasn't, wasn't a, like I said, not a great match you're going to remember, but a lot of logistical things that could have gone <laughs> wrong here especially thinking about who some of the people involved in the match were. Um, so, you know, good job, everyone. <laughs> this was a producer justifying their paycheck. Absolutely. Main card opened with uh, Seth Rollins beating Drew McIntyre clean as a sheet. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. thought this was going to lead to a Drew turn. You turn and beat him down after or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> Zero storyline advancement. And uh, Seth is off into the war games. And uh, Drew might be also, I guess. And I, we still, there's probably still going to be a fifth added to each uh, war game scene. And right now it's only four and four. So uh, maybe we uh, we still have some stories to tell here in the two weeks before the Survivor Series war games. But we'll see. Uh, Seth and Drew, really good match. What did you think? Yeah, these guys work really well together. They had uh, uh, one of the only good uh covid dome matches i remember as well okay. when uh when drew was the champion so okay, i don't remember being cool. like outstanding but i remember them having a good a pretty solid a solid match for that era and uh yeah i think they may have wrestled once in front of fans as well it's hard to remember now but uh yeah i thought this was very good and yeah it's it, it's just like it's wild that this guy who's like six foot four and looks like Drew looks has just never found a way to be successful in the World Wrestling Federation at like a consistent high level. I should say he hasn't been successful. He's been the world champion and a pushed act on television for most of, you know, most of a decade. But at a, at a weird time, though, right? Yes, he got right. He got the belt right going into COVID. They made a concerted effort to not put the belt back on him at that first WrestleMania where they got fans back. Right. They Vince, Vince fell in love with Bob Lashley all over again. Right. Um, they decided they weren't going to crown him again in front of fans this time. So like they, they kicked the tires on him and then they kicked him right back down to that level that he had been at for <laughs> the previous eight years of his career or whatever. I saw the power. There's two um, examples like in the last five years I can think of where I'm like, Wow, that's the power of the, the television of being on global television with mm-hmm. for the World Wrestling Federation. And one was at a WrestleCon, where a line for Bret Hart was like wrapped around the building three times. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like that. That is a level of fame that only comes from being on global television. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the other was being at a WWE house show in Washington D.C. And the reaction that Drew McIntyre got, it was like, whoa, people <laughs> reacted to him like he was a star, like a, yeah. a really big star. And it's like, well, he was pushed as a world champion on TV for two years or whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's the power of being on TV every week. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, unreal. Anyway, I'm maybe mentally challenged. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, pre-show match, Sami Zayn beat JD McDonough. This is a mix of some... Really fun things like Sami Zayn being the bully in a match, which never gets to happen because he's always the underdog fighting from underneath and he never gets to wrestle anybody smaller than him. Mm-hmm. And uh, J- JD McDonough is smaller than everyone. And um, <laughs> he also won with his secondary finisher. He won with the Blue Thunder Bomb. Mm-hmm. Um, and JD McDonough also did some of the worst selling I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Yeah, that about covers it. Like it, it was fun seeing Sami Zayn play like 1988 Hulk Hogan. <laughs> um, but his uh, his Rick Rude or his Mr. Perfect was uh, not up to the task of, of their side of the match, at least when it came time to do the big ping pong sell out of the corner and everything. Uh, just just staggeringly strange decisions made by JD McDonough on the bumps he took. Um, he like. As you referenced there, he very specifically tried to do like the Kurt Hennig 
um, a turnbuckle mm-hmm. flip bump that Hennig would do for Hogan. And right. it's like, that looked silly in 1990. <laughs> it still looks silly 33 years later. Right. It looks silly when he did it for Hogan or Warrior or whoever. Right. It looks really silly when it's <laughs> JD McDonough doing a worse version where he doesn't even like jump and fall in the way that his momentum would take him. Right. <laughs> and doing it for Sami Zayn, who is not the size of Hulk Hogan or the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, right. <laughs> it was it was preposterous. But yes, there were fun elements to it anyway. All right. Um, Raw, they set up um, some Survivor Series stuff. Um, The War Games, as we mentioned. um, So far, it's uh, Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes, Jey Uso, and Sami Zayn against the Judgment Days, uh, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, and I guess J.D. McDonough is in the, in the, uh, the Judgment Day. They still haven't made it official, but whatever. Um... Rhea Ripley will defend against Zoe Stark Mm -hmm. as Zoe Stark won a battle royal on the show. And uh, The Miz won a number one contenders match for the Intercontinental Championship because they were supposed to do a double pin with The Miz and Ivar of the (laughs) Viking Raiders. (laughs) They were supposed to pin uh, Ricochet and uh, Big, Big, Big Bronson Reed at the same time. But Ricochet got concussed and and kicked out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um yeah, two people from the World Wrestling Entertainment uh, uh TKO gr- group holdings are uh, in concussion protocol right now after televised matches this week. Um Ricochet's one of them, but uh as it stands now, Gunther versus The Miz at Survivor Series. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that for? <laughs> You know, I don't know. What pervert wants to see this match, <laughs> honestly? I that I don't. That I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe it'll be fine. Gunther's been on a pretty strong streak of uh, of matches and the Miz is competent. <laughs> sure. Despite my earlier uh tirade. Yeah. He's a competent pro wrestler most of the time. Yeah. Unless he has to ad-lib at all and then he gets lost. Yes. But that's okay. Yes. You know, DDP famously lay, laid out his matches move by move. It's not it's not the end of the world that you do that. So maybe this will be fine. I don't know. <laughs> I just can't imagine I just can't imagine the Miz taking those chops. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that's he's tough. Get, he's gonna get Benoit flashbacks. Like <laughs> oh boy. I will never forget a SmackDown match that they had. <laughs> Benoit and, and Miz had. Or mm-hmm. Benoit just—he destroyed this guy. Yeah. I think he might have actually even lost to him, but he still—he beat him up first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unreal. Um, the NXT is going to the CW Network in 2024, mm-hmm. uh, apparently for a 45 percent increase. Interesting. Didn't have the CW on my bingo card. And uh, what this means for the Billy Pumpkins NWA reality show and the Billy Pumpkins NWA wrestling show being on the CW is still being uh, uh, talked about. Uh, Most people seem to think, well, this means that those deals are off. And some people and then I think Billy came out today and said, uh, well, Everybody's spreading misinformation about this, which is funny considering who that's coming from. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, NXT to CW thoughts. Uh, I think it makes sense. We were talking about this a little bit off the air because for a very long time, the CW uh, taking on its identity from the former WB network was like this. Like they were still holding on to the idea that they were like the cool teen drama network. Absolutely. Um, you know, superhero shows and a lot of a lot of young, attractive, hairless people. Uh what? Body hairless <laughs> people. What? Uh <laughs> who all look like swimmers, uh, with their shirts off on uh on pro- promotional ads for their shows. Um and then like I don't know, a year ago, a year and a half ago, 
somebody new got in charge and looked at it and was like, hey, our um, only people that watch this <laughs> network are 55 year old men. Uh, so let's stop green lighting expensive superhero shows and <laughs> buy the rights to NASCAR and golf and stuff instead. And uh, hey, you know what else does really well with uh, men of a certain age? The World Wrestling Federation. So I think it does make sense for the the direction that the CW is trending, but no, it would not have jumped out at me as the uh, the as the first place that I would have expected NXT to go. They are uh, building to their deadline show, which is Saturday, December 9th, the Iron Survivor Challenge, a very horribly named uh, Shawn Michaels concept. Oh, this is the TNA match, right? This is the one they did last year? Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, uh, Tiffany Stratton and Fallon Henley had a, what could only be described as a Japanese strong style battle this week. <laughs> that uh, I sent you a couple of gifts from this match. So yeah. I ended up I ended up watching the whole thing yesterday. Uh, the whole show. I watched the whole show yesterday. But mm-hmm. um, I had not seen the whole show. I was just seeing gifts of this match. And it's like, Tiffany dumps Fallon out of the ring <laughs> through the ropes. She just dropped her through the ropes to the floor. <laughs> she dropped her like a sack of potatoes. Had her in like, if you haven't seen it, like had her in world's strongest slam position. Yes. And then just like sticks her, sticks her body outside the ropes <laughs> and let's go. Yeah. And this poor girl just splats on the ground. <laughs> and then she hit her prettiest moonsault ever and cr- I don't know whose fault that is. I I don't know, but she cracked her in the head when she landed on her head on yeah. the moonsault, and um, yeah, and uh, Fallon Henley's in uh, concussion protocol now because if you if you find a gif of that, watch Fallon Henley's face after she gets cracked in the head. You can see the concussion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. But uh, yeah, yeah, NXT to uh, CW next year. And uh, most people seem to think that Raw is ending up on FX. So USA Network without the WWE, something we haven't seen since what, uh, 2005? Oh, oh, that's right. They got SmackDown. I, how can I forget that? I don't <laughs> know. It doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, but they'll be without Raw for the first time since 2005. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I think FX makes sense. I, I feel like that's been a network that was ripe for a wrestling show for a while. And, uh, you know, obviously they're so in the most basic, basic cable tier. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, good to make all it all it all checks out. But yeah, I guess it's it's good. I guess they, they mentioned how kind of somewhat underwhelming the increase they got for SmackDown was. So getting such a big increase for NXT, it's still, you know, chump change in this bizarre wrestling tv rights world but it's right it was a pretty pretty sizable increase for what they were getting paid to put it on usa for the last couple years yeah and then it was um it uh it came out on thursday this week that nxt had approached or not nxt cw the cw had approached tony khan in 2022 Mm -hmm. about putting ring of honor on their network and tony was like nope i want to sell all my TV rights together next year or in two years. So I don't know (laughs) right now. His ring of honor is behind a subscription wall and no one watches it. Um, I don't know that it would do gangbusters on the CW, but uh, I guess that's maybe it's a calculated gamble. He took, I don't know. Yeah. Like you could see the argument of trying to, sell your whole package at once um but also like you said i don't know has has putting it on a paywall for a year plus has that made the brand more valuable or like will anyone care if they get roh in the AEW package if they bid on AEW? uh because as we talked about at the time it really felt like well if tbs or tnt wanted roh they would have that's what the saturday show would have been <laughs> Mm-hmm. And instead we got another AEW branded show. So I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's some galaxy brain thing and 
and he will find a a proper TV home for ROH when everything comes together. But yeah, hey, it would have been a way to block your rival from getting it, I guess. So who knows? There's yeah. there's could be any number of a thousand things. Yeah, there's no way to know. Uh, also, congratulations to uh, Carmella and Corey Graves. Uh, finally had their baby. Carmella had been pregnant for, I believe, 14 months. <laughs> she had the gestation period of a giraffe. <laughs> so, congratulations to the happy couple. Yeah, good, good for them. They had an eight-pound baby boy. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, AEW Dynamite this week. What did you think? Uh, I didn't hate it like I hated last week's show. <laughs> so, uh, it was a lot more wrestling focused, which, as I've said, is generally a good way to make the shows easier to watch. Um, there were still things I didn't like, uh, as I alluded to. Uh, they so swear Strickland rest on this show. Yep. I don't know if you remember or not. Um, uh, about two weeks ago, he broke into Hangman Page's home on national television. Yep. Threatened his child. Yep. Uh, as 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 far as we know, there have been no repercussions from AEW management on, or, on, on Mr. Strickland. Or law enforcement. Correct. No one, no one seems to be investigating this. There were no fines nor suspensions uh, levied or threatened. No. Uh, Swerves wrestled other guys. Uh, he wrestled a guy on on Collision last week. Hangman Page was not there. Nope. Uh, uh, Alex Abrahantes had to cut uh, Hangman's revenge promo for him. Yes. Yeah. Which makes sense. They're uh, well known associates. Yeah. Um. So he's going to have this match with Pentagon for the honor of Hangman's child. Uh. This week. And uh, they make a note a, a note to mention that because of the recent actions of Swerve Strickland, uh, Hangman Page has been banned from ringside for this match. Yeah. Uh, keeping in mind that Hangman wrestled last week and Swerve was not banned from ringside for Hangman's match. Also keeping in mind that they apparently cared about delivering this Penta, this advertised Penta Swerve match. Yeah. Um, without any interference or disqualifications that may occur from the Hangman running in but they don't care about the pay-per-view match that they advertise for Swerve and Hangman in a few weeks because the second the bell rang, it was fine that Hangman Page ran down to the ring and beat uh, beat Swerve within an inch of his life and put him through a table and tried to kill him. Yeah. That was all right. Uh, again, no discipline put towards Hangman for that, seemingly. So um, I think this feud is terrible, and I can't believe you've made me not want to see hangman page wrestle swear strictly i think these are my two favorite guys in the whole company <laughs> and i just i just i just get i feel my blood pressure rise when one of them's on tv now because i know something dumb's gonna happen or they're gonna reference the stupid home invasion which if i didn't talk about there's never been a good home invasion in wrestling <laughs> i really don't think there's ever been a good one so i don't know why we keep doing them but i especially don't know why we had to do it in this feud which you know, kind of sells itself based on who's involved, you would think. But uh, this is this is very, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a rest, like a, a WrestleMania. But this is very Bret Hart gets hit by a car on his way to the match with Vince type booking, where you take a match that I think people would like to see and enjoy, uh, and then uh, you add in a, a unnecessary twist or turn to the story because you, you just can't help yourself. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem. A problem is that they have so much TV to fill every week. Sure. And so they have to write the, write some stories to fill the TV time. And both companies um, mm -hmm. suffer from this. The TV doesn't get people over. Correct. <laughs> the right. And the thing I laid out about like him being banned just for the match that's a thing that happens in every wrestling company, you know, AEW impact WWE new Japan, like this happens everywhere and it drives me crazy all the time. So, yes. but it's, it was just especially apparent and annoying to me this week because it's in this feud, which again, I should be really excited to see this match. I liked the match, the last show that they had, 
uh, would like to see them wrestle again. But uh, the more they're on TV, to your point, the less I want to see them. So Dynamite uh, opened with a world title match and it closed with a number one contenders match. <laughs> despite the fact that there's a pay-per-view, uh, <clears throat> there was a pay-per-view 10 days away that already had the main event with the world title and the number one contender announced. Again, the, the promoter in storyline did not care if that <laughs> match was changed. His marquee main event. It's fine to throw title matches and weird stipulations <laughs> out that could have resulted in a Daniel Garcia versus Mark Briscoe main event. But uh, no, we can't, we can't have hangman interrupt the Pentagon match. I I just, I just thought no one thought Mark Briscoe was beating Jay White. No one thought Daniel Garcia was beating MJF. So why book the match? Well, I mean, you don't have to, why put, I get, I think if they're like, well, if we just put these matches on, people won't care. So we'll add steps to them. That being a title match and, Jay White putting his contendership on the line or whatever. But again, nobody. If you don't believe the steps, though, what's the difference? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so just like, and by the way, the wrestling in both matches, uh, I, I didn't love the MJF match, but I really enjoyed the Jay White Mark Briscoe match. Um, so uh, it, it was, it was good. It was good wrestling on the show, but yes, adding those steps just to have a stip so you can say, well, we didn't just put a a flat wrestling match in the opener in the main event. Uh, but again, if it's a stip nobody cares about, it's kind of like you didn't add a stip anyway, isn't it? Yes, that's... Yes, exactly. Thank you. Uh, they also set up uh, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega versus the Young Bucks for the pay-per-view, which sounds uh, perversely entertaining to me. <laughs> Things have never been higher for that match because if uh, Jericho and Kenny win, they get the uh, title shot that the Young Bucks won uh, last month and have not mentioned on television since until this past Wednesday. Um, and if uh, Kenny and Jericho lose, uh, Kenny has to be friends with the Young Bucks. <laughs> Can't hang out with Chris no more. Yeah, he has to stop hanging out with Chris and hang out <laughs> with the Young Bucks instead. So the stakes have never been higher, I think it's fair to say. That's right. Um, Samoa Joe beat Keith Lee to, to retain the ROH TV <laughs> title, which he then promptly vacated because <laughs> because he said he can't go after the, the AEW title is the title he really wants, and uh, he didn't want to be just the Ring of Honor TV champion, and said that uh, he's giving up that title despite the fact that he's had at least one, and I think maybe two or three. AEW World <laughs> Title matches as Ring of Honor TV champion. He definitely as, had the one because it was on the Arthur Ashe show, right? Because he's the longest reigning ROH TV champion in history now, in the mm -hmm. ten or twelve year history of the title or whatever. Um, yeah, he he just he <laughs> he beat Keith Lee, and then he gave up the title that Keith Lee couldn't beat him for apparently keith lee's birthday of all days <laughs> you couldn't have him win the roh tv title like and and honest I'm, to god at this point does it matter do, like is does doing a job there hurt joe especially if you do like a flash roll up or something does it right. matter he gets caught <laughs> somebody comes out on the stage and distracts him they don't you know. hate doing those finishes right ref bump <laughs> whatever like you do something where he slips on a banana peel to win and also people get title shots off of losses all the time on this show now so i don't know why if the idea is well joe's going for the world title we can't beat him we can't take it but we want the belt off of him um one i would argue that you can because it's fake and you can do whatever you want and two uh who cares because guys lose and then get title matches all the time uh Air AR Fox has never won a match and he's Correct. got like a shots dozen the TNT title like 18 times. He's had a dozen title shots in this company. <laughs> oh, that's that was I was just like he beats Keith Lee right in the middle of the ring, chokes him out, and then it's just like, I don't want this anymore. <laughs> For no good reason. And like we assume that the real reason is Joe is uh he's involved in that twisted metal show on Peacock, mm -hmm. and maybe he has other voiceover or acting stuff in the works and the sure. sag after strike ended this week so maybe he's going to go back to work and he's going to be in and out 
you know, more frequently than he has been. I don't know when the last time he had a TV title match on Ring of Honor was, by the way. But <laughs> Wait, does uh, he work those uh, those <laughs> those post collision tapings that not like, that I'm aware of? Are at? <laughs> not that I'm aware of. I think he killed uh, he killed somebody on a collision like two or three weeks ago. That's the other thing too. He doesn't have feuds for his belt. Like right. he comes to, to AEW and feuds with people in there. But the only match I remember him having that was built up at all was a match with Mark Briscoe, which was seven months ago and really feels like <laughs> Mark Briscoe could have just won, which I believe we said at the time because the whole story was it was Mark Briscoe challenging for this title. He's never won right. in honor of his dead brother. And then Joe just beat him. And then, yeah, and then and, Mark has been off TV and had knee surgery since then. <laughs> right. So, like, what's the difference? Yeah, I don't Mark know, man. Mark could have just won it. Keith could have just won it. And then, hey, Keith <laughs> has a belt. Joe's going after a belt. And whoever else wants a belt has a belt. Big Bill has a belt. So we're all happy. Everybody wins. <laughs> exactly. Everybody wins. You don't just go out and say, oh, I'll be your lobby if you need me. <laughs> I don't, I don't like this belt anymore. I want the other belts. What? You can have both. You know, to- Tony Khan, he went to Joe and he said, Joe, uh, win the ROH TV title. And Joe said, all right, not a bad idea. <laughs> and then uh, and then they said, hey, uh, Joe, this isn't really working out. We want you to go after the world title. He said, yeah, all right. That, I was, I was going to suggest that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Joe was putting um, on wonderful variety shows as the television <laughs> champion. <laughs> He was also the TNT champion at the same time he was the television champion for a while. Remember? He was the he was king, the of, king television. of television. Yes. He, it was actually a pretty fun like three-week bit, beat where he kept beating Wardlow. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Him and Darby had a really good match on TV. I, like, why, why did he just suddenly <laughs> decide? I don't want yeah, I don't want this anymore. Hey, uh, I just I just discovered that our ROH friend is poison. <laughs> <laughs> it's actively harming my career. <laughs> I can't be associated with this any longer. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. It was a dead brand when he bought it. Mm-hmm. It was a dead brand when he bought it 18 months ago. Mm-hmm. What are we doing now? Anyway. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mariah May signed, mm-hmm. uh, as uh, had been expected. And they've already, uh, they debuted her in a backstage interview with RJ City. <laughs> and uh, she, um, the rumored... Uh, Tony Storm, a uh, Mariah May, a uh, pairing seems to be in the works as they might be doing a Mariah May. It's a crazed Tony Storm stalker angle mm-hmm. straight out of 1998, 1999 WWF, or uh, maybe they'll be friends. I don't know. Sure. But um, Mariah May, everyone online is extremely horny for her. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what she's got. Yeah, uh, I didn't know she was Australian. She sounds like she's from London. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I did not. Uh, I did not know that. Um, I think. I think, as I said to you off the air, she just she looks exactly like Tiffany Stratton. So I just sort of assumed that she sounded exactly like Tiffany Stratton. <laughs> sure. So uh, that was news to me. But yeah, uh, everyone that watches Stardom says that she like showed some of you know market improvement from where she started so uh and she seems like she's uh you know they're gearing up to put her with tony who is by default the most pushed act in the women's division yes at the moment um yes so that's a a good place <laughs> to start somebody if you want them to be a star as big of a star as one can be in the AEW women's division Yes, Tony Storm and Luther are the biggest push stars in the AEW <laughs> women's division as we speak. That's right. Hikaru Shida, a distant number three to Luther. <laughs> yes, correct. Um, what else do we have here? We have uh, five first five matches, I think, are set for uh, Wrestle Kingdom um, as... Sonata and Naito, we've known that for months now. Mm-hmm. Danielson versus Okada too. Yeah, we knew Daniel... this was happening, but maybe weren't clear where or when. Yeah, we were. Pre- we were pretty sure it was going to be here. <laughs> uh, it's just you know, hopefully Brian Danielson's uh, broken orbital bone is healed in less than two months' time. Yeah. Um, Will Ospreay versus John Moxley versus David Finley for a new championship 
as they are getting rid of the US UK title. You know what would go great in this peanut butter and jelly sandwich is some mustard. <laughs> David Finley. <laughs> The unneeded third ingredient of pro wrestling, David Finley. He's uh, fine. He's fine. I best wishes to him. I just I was like, I feel like people would be really jazzed about Osprey and Moxley, and uh, now it's a three way. Right. Well, Moxley doesn't work there, and uh, Osprey's probably leaving there. Right. So Finley's got to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's about yeah. the long and short of it. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you could have had you could have whoever wins drop it to Finley at New Year's Dash the next day or whatever. Are they doing New Year's Dash this year? Have they announced that? Yeah, they are. Okay, so, they are. But no, it's fine. You want you want to make sure one of your guys that's staying beats the guy that's probably leaving. So it makes sense in a way. <laughs> Hiromu Takahashi against El Desperado. It's look, it's the best match they can do in their junior mm-hmm. heavyweight division. They've also been doing it pretty much nonstop for the last five years yeah i was thinking somebody was mentioning dragon lee and i was like oh yeah what happened to him oh he's in wwe that's right uh <laughs> yeah uh but uh yeah it was for a long time it was it was some combination of hiromu and osprey and dragon lee and now it's basically just hiromu and 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 despy all the time on the big shows and it's always great but yep. hard to imagine it uh standing out amongst their pantheon of good to great matches. And the junior tag titles with uh, Clark Connors and Joel Maloney defending against TJP and Francesco Akira, the winners of Super Junior Tag League. There will also be a tag title match with the winners of the World Tag League facing Goto and Yoshihashi, the most boringest tournament of all time. (laughs) (laughs) The greatest... Line from a Jay Briscoe promo, I'll never forget. Ugh. That's coming up over here over the next month. And um, yeah, so that's coming up. And AEW Full Gear is coming up. And <laughs> Survivor Series War Games is coming up. Mm-hmm. And um, everyone online is very uh, is going to work themselves into thinking CM Punk's going to show up in Chicago. And hey, Look, Vince McMahon sold $700 million worth of WWE stock this week. Mm-hmm. And TKO Group Holdings put out, uh, an S- in an SEC filing last week, put a, uh, a uh, there was a notation in there that uh, having Vince McMahon on the company's board may, may, is, is, a negative for, <laughs> is a negative for the company. <laughs> it's hurting their bottom line. <laughs> and Yes. And Vince has a boss for the first time since 1982. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, Ari Emanuel. And he's already told him that he can't play with uh, the TV shows no more. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're closer than we've ever been to a WWE without Vince. Correct. And I wouldn't be shocked if uh, November 25th, if we hear Cult of Personality in Chicago, I would not be shocked whatsoever because I don't think Vince is the one making that call. And I think everyone else in that company has a, what can we do uh, to generate the most revenue uh, mindset? Yeah. Uh, it, it makes sense for, for a lot of people. As you mentioned, the one guy who allegedly did stop Fox or, or when Fox inquired about right. him signing in 2019, told them that he will bring anyone in but punk at the time. Yes. yes. Uh, he no longer has that decision making power. So it's all up to it's all up to Uncle Nick checking if they if the if the coffers are full or not and if it makes the most sense for whatever brand deal sponsorships he is currently trying to sell for each individual match of the WrestleMania card. And if there's still money in the budget, if Totino's pizza rolls forks up enough cash, then Phil will be there. Yeah. If it doesn't make financial sense. He won't. So um, I'm sure he'd very much like to be there. So uh, we'll see. Listen, we have nothing but respect for Phil. <laughs> the greatest <laughs> non answer of all time. Like, we have a lot of respect for what Phil did. And uh, 
and uh, we wish him the best of luck. <laughs> just like completely not committing to we love him. We want to talk to him. Our, he didn't do like the doors always open, but right. he also in no way was like, no, we're not like he's I just want to say that I have a lot of respect for Phil and we appreciate all the things he did before. <laughs> Who's that mean? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I need to iron out this Nick Khan impression, though. He's a very, it's a very difficult guy to do an impression of for me for some reason. He's very smooth, but he, I wanted to read me a bedtime story. <laughs> All right. Bye. Has eyes like a doll's eyes. <laughs> They're completely black. Completely black, and they do not seem to move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? No, I think that about covers it. All right. Let's go. All right. Till next time, everyone. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Well, maybe the writing is on the wall. Anything else about that? Uh, that well, now we're just doing the show. I haven't heard anything <laughs> else about that federal investigation or when like documents were seized at his home in a while. Yeah, that's uh, troubling. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's maybe too bad. Everything's fine, you know. <laughs> no, that's too bad. <laughs> One thing I know about the federal government. Um, they always they- get their man. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they hold a grudge. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> they always get their man. They'll get you for something. He was he was he may have um avoided the slammer 29 years ago, but mm-hmm. uh they remember. <laughs> <laughs> did you see Gunner and Adley won uh Silver Sluggers? I did see that. That's nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's a little something to hang your hat on and new guys that we can use for Immaculate Grid. Yes, the most important thing. Absolutely. I would like to take this moment to shit on the crossover grid, <laughs> <laughs> which appears to be a crowdsourced version of. Uh, oh, is that uh, why it's bad? I'm, I'm not sure. But it's pulling. It pull definitely pulls like images from uh, Wikipedia or something, mm-hmm. and um, I think it's just flat out wrong sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, and it has a numbering system that is absolutely chaotic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. did it? Did uh, wrestling crossover grid like number thirty six on a Monday, <laughs> and oh, then. Right. Uh, it jumped to number 40 on Tuesday. I'm like, what actually just happened here? But that's okay. You just you just want to remember some guys, all right? That's what all those little grid sports slash wrestling games are for. And if I can't reliably remember some guys because I don't trust the system to recognize the guy I'm remembering. Yes. You know, what are we doing? For your example... They called, uh, they referred to Diamond Dallas Page as DD Page. <laughs> Very funny. Super chaotic. Yes. Yeah. I did enjoy, they had um, uh, like a, a TV category, which is mm-hmm. f- fun. Uh, and the first one I clicked on had like uh, Kelsey Grammer and uh, you had to name a show he was in, a comedy he was in. And a series that was on Fox or something like that, for example. And uh, there was real promise there with the uh, the TV category, but I don't think there's a lot of interest because there are only like five days available. Um, as I mentioned, a chaotic website, crossover <laughs> grid, uh, go to hell. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, amen. I try to keep on keeping on.